Amen. Praise the Lord. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Let's look at verse number 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13 says, There had no temptation, trial, or test, taking you but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer or allow you to be tempted, tried, or tested, above that you are able, but will with the temptation, trial, or test, also make a way to escape, that you may be able to bear it. Amen. We're talking from the subject matter of life options for broken situations. Amen. Life options for broken situations. Amen. Now, broken situation is, is a situation that could cause, uh, that cause you to have little hope. Amen. Amen. A situation uh, that requires, watch this now, that, that causes people to go into despair. Amen. So with every uh, situation, there's always a positive life option if we learn how to take it. Amen. God says that he always makes a way for us to escape. Amen. So the first thing I want to tell you tonight is that your best days are ahead of you. Praise the Lord. Amen. Your best days are ahead. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Somebody need to get that. My best days are ahead of me. Amen. Amen. Now, whether you know it or not, trouble did not catch God by surprise. Your trouble. Amen. What you find yourself going through right now did not catch God by surprise. It might have surprised you. Amen. But God says, I'm not surprised by what you're going through because I have already surveyed your life, God says, and I know that whatever you're going through that you can handle it. You know, sometimes you're on the brink, praise the Lord, but God said, I know that you have what's in you to handle your situation, praise the Lord, amen? Then I found out that God says that a problem cannot exist unless there is a life option for it, amen? Death cannot exist unless life is there with it, amen? We just have to learn how to choose life instead of choosing death. Go to Deuteronomy chapter number 30, amen? Deuteronomy chapter 30, because it all comes down to how we see a thing. Two people can see the same situation. One calls it death, and the other one can cause it, call it life. Amen? It's up to us. What I say about the situation matters. Amen. Amen. See, I'm fully persuaded that whatever God promised, he's able also to perform. Amen? Glory to God. Amen? Deuteronomy chapter number 30. Deuteronomy chapter 30. Look at verse number 19. Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse number 19 says, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you life and death blessing and cursing therefore choose what life. life that both thou and thy seed may live so it's not only about me choosing life because it has an impact on the next generation and the next generation and the next generation so my choice my life option to choose life affects more than just me amen praise the Lord amen and we need to understand that see because some people are making choices that will affect the next generation. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, we said on last week, we said on last week that if we're going to choose life, one, choosing life means I will always obey a divine directive. Whatever God tells me to do, that is what I'm going to do. Amen. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. God, I'm going to obey. Now, watch this now. Every delay is still disobedience. Praise the Lord. So when God tells you to do a thing right now, if you delay in doing that thing, you still are in disobedience. Praise the Lord. We also said that choosing life means that you will overcome the difficulties and the devastations because the greater one lives on the inside of you. You have, you have, listen, man, you have the greater one, Holy Spirit living on the inside of you. Amen. So you can overcome every situation, every devastation and every difficulty in your life. Why? Because I got the greater one living on the inside of me. Amen. Then we said that, listen, I'm not choosing life means that I'm not going to be overwhelmed by statistics, amen? It doesn't matter what the statistics say about my situation. I win. Praise the Lord, amen? That, that's my mindset. I don't care what my situation looks like. I don't care what the statistics say, the, the facts say, because I know that those things can change, amen? Those things are only temporary, amen? I, see, when you know the truth, the Bible says the truth shall make you free, Amen? Praise the Lord. Amen. And see, the truth will overwhelm the facts. Praise the Lord. See, you got to understand that. The statistics and the facts can be overwhelmed by the truth. The truth is God's word. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Now, go to Proverbs chapter number uh, three. Choosing life means that I'm going to trust God. Somebody say trust God. See, when you have a situation... 
you can make a choice that, listen, I'm going to allow the situation to overwhelm me, or either I'm going to trust God. Somebody say, trust God. Trust God. See, see, that's what we got to understand. Trusting God means more than just reading Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6. Amen. Now, we're going to read Proverbs 3, verse 5 and 6, but it means more than just reading it. Amen. See, see, most people just think, well, all I got to just do is just read that scripture, and that means I trust God. No, it don't. It means that you can just read. See, it all, look, it's only when you go through a life situation that will really indicate whether you trust God or not. Amen. Because, see, if you never had a test, amen, you don't know if you really trust God. You can say it all day long, but until you go through the fire, <laughs> praise the Lord, that will determine whether you trust God or not. Proverbs chapter number number three. Look at verse number five. Proverbs chapter number three. Watch this now. Verse number five. Look what it says. Proverbs three verse five says, trust in the Lord with what? All thine heart and lean not into thine own understanding and all thy ways. What? Acknowledge. Acknowledge him and he shall what? So he says here that I got to trust God with everything I am, with all my heart. Amen. And get away from my own little reasoning. Amen. My mindset. Amen. But in everything I do, acknowledge him, and he's going to direct my path. Now, we, we, have been, we have been built <laughs> now, and designed by God to trust somebody or something. That's just God's, that's our DNA makeup. We got to trust something. Amen. Either we're going to trust men, either we're going to trust God, either we trust the system, or, or trust ourselves, or we trust God. Amen. One, one of four factors, you're going you to trust something. Amen. You look, you can trust the system. Amen. Go, go to uh, Proverbs chapter 11. Proverbs chapter 11. See, the system says, if I have enough money, I'm good. Amen. If I have enough money in the bank, I'm all right. And, and many people you see, you see a few years back, June, that, that when the stock market took a crash, and the people who had all that money invested in the stock market, they start jumping out buildings. Why? Because they put their trust in the system. Proverbs chapter 11. Look at verse number 28. Proverbs chapter 11. Verse number 28. Watch this now. Watch. Watch what it says. Look what the first part of this says. He that trusted in his riches shall what? Shall fall. They 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 gonna fall, amen. If they put their rich, they trust in riches. Why? Because that stuff ain't gonna last. Amen. Okay. Go to Matthew. Matthew. Watch this. Matthew chapter number ten. Matthew chapter number ten. Now now on the backdrop of the young rich ruler going to Jesus and Jesus telling him, "Go sell what you have and give it to the poor." The young rich ruler had a problem with that because he trusted in his money. And he couldn't see himself uh, uh, away from his money. He said, look, this is who I am. He said, look, you want to be a part of my team, go, go sell what you have and give to the poor. But watch this now. Matthew chapter 10, look at verse number 24. This is going to dispel the myth that the disciples were poor. <laughs> Amen. Matthew chapter 10. Uh, look at verse number. Where I tell you to go? Is that where I want to go? Let's see. Let's see. Matthew chapter 10. No, that's not where I want to go. That's not it. Uh-uh, uh-uh. I want the, that's in Mark chapter 10. It's in Mark chapter 10. That's why. Uh-huh. Y'all should have picked that up in the spirit. Mark chapter 10. Uh, that's where it's at right there. Mark chapter 10. See that? Y'all should have picked that up in the spirit. Verse 24 says, and the disciples were astonished at his words. What, what words were they astonished at? Verse 23, he says, and Jesus looked round about and said unto his disciples, how hardly shall they that have riches enter into the kingdom of God? So the disciples were astounded. They're like, hey, we got money, you know? And so you say it's hard for the rich folk to get to heaven, but Jesus, we got money because, look, we had servants, we had boats, we were fishermen. Look, we, were, we had an economic impact. Praise the Lord. And so verse 24 says, but Jesus answered again and said unto them, children, how hard it is for them that trust in riches to enter into the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. It wasn't that he was rich. It was that the fact that he trusted in his money. Amen. 
You know, the Bible says that the love of money is the root of all evil. It's not money, because people have always misquoted that, Pauline. They always say money is the root of all evil. It is not. It's when you love it and trust it to the point that where you put it over God, amen, that it becomes a problem for you. Because I can have a whole bunch of money. Praise the Lord. God, I, I'll be all right. Praise the Lord. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Okay. Not only that, but they, 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 they put the trust in themselves. Amen. Go to Proverbs 28. Proverbs 28. See, God designed us to trust somebody. And there are people who will trust themselves. Amen. Proverbs 28. Look at verse number 26. Proverbs 28. Watch this now. Verse number 26. <laughs> Look what he says. He that trusted in his own heart is a what? So if a person put all their trust and stock in themselves, the Bible calls them a what? I didn't call them that. The Bible said, if you trust yourself, you're a fool. Who prayed the Lord? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Not only that, but watch this now. Uh, go to Psalms. Psalms 119. Psalms 119. Uh-huh. The other area is they put their trust in man. Huh. But look what the Bible says. Psalms 118. Look at verse number 8. Psalms 118, verse number 8. Look what it says. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. It is better to trust in the Lord than put your confidence in princes. Amen. So here's what the Bible says. Look, men going to fail you. The moment you put all your trust in a man, and I mean man generically, as man or woman, they're going to let you down. Yep. But God will never let you down. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Amen. So we can't put our trust in, God, in, in man. We have to put our total trust in God. That's why God said, look, look, I'm a jealous God. You can't have no other God before me. So when we put our trust in the system, we put our trust in other men, we put our trust in ourselves. God says, look, I'm a jealous God. Yeah, 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 yeah. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. Now watch this, watch this. Go to, uh, go to, uh, mm, mm, mm. go to uh, Psalm 62. Psalm 62. I have found that when people are up, oh yeah, but they trust God. Yeah, yeah, they trust God. When, they, when everything going right for them, they have no problems, no challenges in their lives. And God, look, I'm, 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 I trust you, God. When the sun is shining, amen, everything's flowing good in my life. My children acting right. My husband give me a kiss every now and then. Your husband, rather. My wife, praise the Lord. My wife, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Look, everything is cool. But what happens when the storm rises? Do you trust God then? All right, Psalm 62. Look at verse number 8. Psalm 62, verse number 8. Watch what it says. Trust in him at what? At all, at all time. So that means when I'm up, I trust God. And when I'm down, I trust God. When I'm left, I trust God. When I'm right, I trust God. All the time, I, I trust God. Now, you prove that you trust God by how you behave. Amen. And how you act under difficult situations. See, see, when everything's going well, look, it's easy to, for you to act, you know, trust God. But it's only when you go through your difficult challenge that really the rubber meets the road. Do you really trust God then? Or do you revert back to your old way of life? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, now, there are three ways that people trust God. Number one. They trust God out of desperation. Somebody say desperation. desperation. Amen. Yeah, people, you know, they, they, God is their last option. You know, when people are about to die, you know, they haven't accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior. But then, you know, I know I need to do something, Sister, Sister Washington. I got to do something. I better accept Jesus now before I die out of desperation. See, God wants us to, 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 to trust him before that time comes because he, he needs us in the earth realm, watch this now, to carry out the assignment, to carry the message, the good news of the gospel of Christ. Amen? Not when we're about to die, but he'll accept us. He'll accept us. Praise the Lord. He'll accept you, but, but, but God, he, there's a better option. Amen? Except while I'm young. 
So he have all my activities on my limbs. I could go out there and do what God wants me to do. Right. Praise the Lord. Then, then people, people uh, trust God through deliberation. Deliberation, amen? They think about it. They think about it. They start to reason now. They start to, you know, deduct whether or not I should trust God or not. Okay, is, is this going to be to my benefit by trusting God? Amen? What what that Bible say? What that Bible say? You know, if if I if I you know if I try, if I do what He tell me to do, uh, I'll spend my days in prosperity and my years in pleasure. Let me think about that for a second. Let me deliberate on that thing. And let's see what the world is offering me. Deliberation, Amen. And then there are people who trust God out of revelation, Amen. amen. When I when I get a revelation from God. When Jesus asked the disciples, whom do men say that I the son of man am? You know, some say that you this and some say you that. He said, but whom do you say that I am? Say, you are the son of the living God. And he said, you didn't get that by, by, by natural means because you could have said that my mother was Mary and my father was Joe, my biological father was Joseph. And that would have been correct. But you got it from a divine source. Amen. My father told you about that. Now, let me tell you about yourself, Peter. Upon this rock, this revelation knowledge, I'll build my church. We got to get a revelation when it comes down to trusting God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Now, now, people don't trust God. Watch this now. Because of fear. Fear. That's what causes people not to trust God. Fear. Fear of the unknown. I can't see God. So, 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 look. All my situations I see. I see it going left here. I see this going left there. And, and, and now the fear of failure causes me not to trust God. That's why over and over the Bible tells us that be not afraid, be not afraid. If you look at the Bible, 88 times God says, fear not, be not afraid, fear not, be not afraid. Because he understood that fear can cause you not to trust God. <clears throat> Amen. And so, so we got to understand that when it comes down to trusting God, I cannot fear my situation or the outcome, or the negative impact of my situation, I got to trust that what God said, he going to do it. Amen. Yep, yep. And so many people, I, I tell you, I, I, I look at people's lives and I see when the things are not going their way, when, when, when everything's not looking right, man, that fear jumps on them. Amen. And they go back into their old lifestyle. Go back to doing what they've been doing. Why? Because I fear that God's not going to come through for me. Amen? And that, look, when you're looking at a life option to fear or trust God, I'm telling you your best option is to trust God. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. That's your best choice. And see, the good news about God is he won't force that decision on us. He loves us so much that he made us free moral agents with the ability to choose. Amen? You can choose life or you can choose death. And I'm telling you that one of the life options is choose life. Don't choose fear. That's the devil's uh, uh, thing that he gives people. He gives them fear. Why? Because fear is opposite of faith. God wants us to stand in faith. The devil wants us to operate in fear because he knows it negates every, every promise that God made to us. Yeah. Yeah. But that causes us, to, and that's why, that's why he says, I haven't given you the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and of a sound mind. That's what God says. I mean, I'm not just saying this. God said that I didn't give you fear. So when you're looking at your situation and, 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 and fear rises up in you, that didn't come from God. Fear that you're going to go under, that didn't come from God. Fear that you're not going to make it. That didn't come from God. The life option says, I will live and not die. And declare the works of the Lord. When the enemy sends you sickness and disease, you tell the devil, look, I'm, I'm going to live. I'm not dying. I ain't, I, look, he, say, he says, with long life shall he satisfy us. Well, I'm a young guy, so I ain't satisfied yet, God, so I got to stay here a long time. I got I to gotta be around here for Sister Gladys. Shoot, she going to shoot. I want to keep on going with her. I mean, she be stepping, praise the Lord, amen? Praise the Lord. She acting like she's 28. Well. 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 
Go to 1 Kings chapter number eight, 18. 1 Kings chapter 18. Another, another thing that causes us not to trust God is just simply unbelief. <clears throat> Many people, Sister Porter, are dying for a lack of knowledge because church is just stirring up their emotions and not giving them proper information or revelation. And when we don't have the right information, we're going to be between two opinions. And if I don't know, I'm gonna, I might choose wrong. First Kings chapter 18. Look at verse number 21. First Kings chapter 18. Verse number 21. And Elijah came unto all the people and said, How long halt ye between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. And the people answered him not a word. He, say, he said, look, unbelief is, is wavering between two opinions. And the prophet said, how long you'll stay there? How long you'll be between two opinions? He said, choose one of them. If God be God, choose him. If Baal be God, then choose him. But just make a choice. Somebody say, make a choice. Make a choice, make a choice amen. Amen. Now, now here's, here's the good news, though. The cure for unbelief, watch this now, is knowledge of the word of God. When Jesus was walking the earth and, and he was going around teaching, he came upon in Mark chapter 6, he, he, said, he said, I couldn't do no mighty works because of their unbelief. And then verse 6 says in Mark chapter 6, verse 6, that he went about teaching in their synagogues. Why? Because that's the only cure to unbelief. Being taught the word of God. Ooh, geez. See, see that, that's, why, that's why I take the time to systematically teach this ministry. Why? Because I understand that in order to drive out unbelief, I got to teach you the word. Amen. Amen. I can't hoop and holler at you, make you feel good, make your hair stand up on your head. Why? Because when, the, when, when you get in your life situation, amen, you got to have a life option that's going to say live and not die. Amen. Go to Isaiah 5. Isaiah 5. Watch this. Isaiah chapter 5. Look at verse number 13. Isaiah 5. Verse number 13. Watch this now. Therefore, my people are gone into captivity. Watch this now. Because they have no knowledge and their honorable men are famished and their multitude dried up with thirst he says they're in captivity because they just don't know amen now i grew up in church all my life and man i really didn't know the word of god I, look gwen and i when we got married i had to give her my bible so she could find the scripture for me so that I could just even just be what a preacher was. He only went to one scripture, but I couldn't find that one. So I would have to pass my Bible to her, have her find the scripture, and then give it back to me so I at least know I was there. And all those years that I wasted in church, allowing people to sing to me and holler at me and to hoop at me and all that kind of stuff. And then I grew up and I, look, I wanted to go back to my childhood days and beat the preacher up. Because I didn't know. I wasted all these years in church and you didn't teach me the word of God so I could overcome my situation. Now, I didn't, I didn't mean I want to beat the preacher up. I, you know, I didn't want to beat him up. But, I, you know, the, just the idea that he wasted my time in church. Oh, there he go. Amen. So, so here I am in captivity, not knowing that I could be free, not knowing that I could be the head and not the tail above only and not beneath. I didn't know. I just didn't know. And I depended on the people that was already there. 
Say, man, you've been here for 60 years. Surely you ought to know. But they kept on climbing the rough side of the mountain. And God told me I could speak to the mountain. Just tell that mountain, get out, out the way, and it got to go. But here I am, calling Jesus on the main line, telling him what I want. And Jesus said, don't ask me nothing. Ask the Father in my name, and he going to give it to you. And here I am, not having knowledge and being captive. Being enslaved. Why? Because I just didn't know. I didn't know. And Jesus said, my people are destroyed because they have no knowledge. Not that they don't have emotions. Not that they're not having good church. They just don't have no knowledge. See, see, there's a difference between having good church and having knowledge. Now, good church is going to give me a good feeling, but having knowledge is going to give me victory. See, see, my, my thing is, my thing is, look, look, give me the word so I can have victory in my life. And that's going to create its own gravy for me. Amen. When I'm on top experiencing God's best in my life, guess what? It's going to create its own gravy. And I don't need the preacher. I don't need brother man to hoop at me. Just teach me the word. Teach me how to do this thing God's way. And if you teach me how to do it God's way, then look, look, when I leave this place, okay, here's part of the problem. Because the preacher needed you to be dependent upon him in order that he might feel better about himself. <laughs> what you say? I'm going to just bust a fraternity out. I'm going to bust a fraternity out. See, my thing is, if I teach you how to do it, amen, then we all get involved in the victory. Look, I mean, we can all make impact in our own little areas if you, all, if you know just as much as I know. That's why I don't keep nothing back from y'all. Look, I'm going to tell you what God says so, so you can know like I know, so we all can be victorious. Go to, go to Matthew chapter 22. Matthew chapter 22. Watch this. Matthew chapter 22. See, because I, I got to cure this unbelief. Because it's causing people not to trust God. Will God do it? Won't God do it? Is he, is, does he hear me? Or does he not hear me? Look, look, it, does he care about me? I need to know. Amen? Because if I'm going to make a life decision, I need to know what God says so I can make the right decision. Matthew 22, verse number 29. Watch this now. Jesus answered and said unto them, You do error, not knowing the scriptures, nor the power of God. What you say? So people are making error in their lives because they just don't know the word. Amen. Again, so if I know the word I, and I know what God says and the word is the truth, then I'm not bound by statistics. I'm not bound by facts that's going to change. I'm bound by the truth because I know the word of God. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, now watch this now. Each and every one of us have a criteria on how we're going to believe God. Yeah. Each of us have our own personal criteria. When it comes down to believing God, Didymus had a criteria. Didymus say, "Lord, if I if I could touch you, if I could if I could just if I could just put my hand in your side, I'll believe you." And Jesus said, "Okay, if that's your criteria, then your criteria needs to change. But I'm going I'm gonna help you. I'm gonna help you because I'm gonna let you touch. I'm gonna to put your finger in the hole in my hands. I'm gonna let you thrust your finger, hands in my side." And He says, "And be not faithless, but believing." He said, blessed are those who don't have to have this, this, this evidence to believe. Amen? And so what is your criteria for you to trust God? Amen? Do you need all your bills paid in order for you to trust God? Amen? Because the moment you don't have a bill paid, amen, then you ain't going to trust him? Is that how you're going to operate? Is your criteria that I have to be void of pain in my body 
in order to, for me to trust that God, by your stripes, I'm healed. Is that your criteria? Because if it is, then the devil going to play with you. Amen? He going to send a pain here and a pain there. And then he going to say, well, I thought God said that by his stripes, you're healed. Well, just because my body have a pain don't mean I'm not healed. What's your criteria? Each of us have a criteria for trusting God. And I'm telling you that if your criteria is not what God said in his, in, in his word, then your criteria is, uh, is off. Okay, okay. See, when it comes down to decision making, there are four factors, factors that show up. Your mind going to show up. Your reasoning, how I think. And, that, and, and, and that's going to be based upon your experiences, amen? So, so it influences how you think, your experience, what you grew up at, you know, uh, what your parents told you, what people in authority told about you. All that affects how I think, you know? I mean, even my own little experiences, if, if I never experienced better, you know, there, 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 are people, there are people who have never left Beaumont, okay? And never seen anything outside of Beaumont. Well, their reasoning is only limited to what they know happened here in Beaumont. But you get somebody who have seen things. Now they're able to expand their mindset, amen? Okay? Your emotions are going to show up. Amen? But your emotions, watch this now, <laughs> have been contaminated. They're, they're impulsive. They're unreliable. Praise the Lord. And that's why God tells us to set our affections. We have the ability to set our own affections, our emotions. I don't let nobody get me down. I set my own. Look, I got my own thermostat. So there's nothing you can tell me that's going to get me down. Why? Because God said, I can set it. Somebody say, I can set it. So your emotional state, making a decision based upon emotions is unreliable. Amen? Because sometimes people... You know, they vacillate in their emotions. They're up and they're down. They're crying. They're happy. They, oh, Lord Jesus. I mean, it's just, up and, it's just one of them things. And it's unreliable. It's unreliable to make a decision that way. Unless you learn how to set your affections. Then your flesh will show up at the table of decision making. But it's been contaminated by the world system, amen, by the devil. Hallelujah. That's why the Bible says there's no good thing that dwelleth in the flesh. Hallelujah. It, the Bible says that your flesh is an enemy of God yeah, yeah. to the point to where you can't even please God if you're operating in the flesh. It's been contaminated, amen? Oh, Lord, that's, that's, that, that's why the devil, that's why the devil, he wants that flesh to dominate. He wants your flesh to dominate. And that's why Holy Spirit has been living on the inside of us so our spirit man can dominate, to tell his flesh what to do and what it cannot do. And then the fourth factor that shows up when it comes down to our decision making is Holy Spirit. And, it, and it, it, look, whoever dominates at the table, whether it's your mind, whether it's your emotions, whether it's your flesh, or whether it's the Holy Spirit, watch this now. Whoever you deem more reliable as the source, that's, who gonna, that's how you're going to make your decision. Amen. And when you don't have information from the word of God, guess what? The first three factors are going to dominate. One of those three things. And I'm telling you, that's why people can go to church Sunday after Sunday, Wednesday after Wednesday. And because they don't hear the word of God, they never change. And guess what? One of those first three factors, either their mind, their emotions, or their flesh dominate how they live. And that's why they continue to be in sin. Why? Because I don't know nothing. Praise the Lord. You can't hold me accountable for what I don't know. And so, so the Bible says that Holy Spirit brings back to our remembrance what we put in here. Amen. So if I have nothing on my hard drive for Holy Spirit to bring back, then how is he going to do it? Lady Gwen did a wonderful example many, a couple of years ago about the hard drive, amen, how, how we've been designed, you know, and, and there's certain things that God placed in us that, that 
is, 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 is recall. But then once we study for ourselves and get more information on there, now we have more to God for God to pull on. Amen. And that's that's why that again, I understand, man, that, that if we're gonna trust God, it's gonna be because we know about him. Man, if you don't know God as your father, if you don't know God as your conqueror, if you don't know God, if you don't know God as your surplus and your supply, if you don't know God for just all who he is, you're not going to be able to pull on what you need because you just don't know. The Bible says, look, we can do great exploits when we know about him. I don't want to know of him. I want to know about him. I want to look, God, how do you operate? And I ain't going to look at all this, all this preacher stuff. Well, you know, God works in strange and mysterious ways. His wonders to perform. That's a lie. That's a lie. He put it in his word. He said, look, I took the mystery out of me. So that you can know. He wants us to know. So that we can trust him. Amen. And if we're going to have life options in broken situations, we got to know God. In order to trust God, we got to know him. I look, I, God, I got to know you. Moses said, look, God, I need to know who you are. Amen. Show me your glory. I, God, I need, to know, I need to know who you are because if you want me to lead these folk, I need to know who you are. Because if you ain't with us, I can't go. <laughs> Amen. If, I, if I'm going to trust you, I need to know who you are. Man, and that's what this is all about. This is not just to come to church. Amen. This is not just to have a church experience, man. This is about knowing our God. So that when a life situation comes, I got a life option. When death shows up, life shows up. Wow. Now, choose life. When curses show up, blessing shows up. Choose the blessing. But if I don't know, I might choose the wrong thing. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Let me give you all these seven things and I'll be through. Okay. Number one, rely on the word of God and let it define your situation. The Bible says God will perfect everything concerning you. So I got to rely on the word of God and let it define my situation. Number two, release the pressure by casting my care on him. So when I have a life situation, or a broken situation, watch this now, I cast my care on him because the Bible says he cares for me. Thirdly, resist the temptation to discount the spiritual by looking at the natural. Resist the temptation to discount the spiritual by looking at the natural. Whether you know it or not, that which is spiritual is more real than what we see. Amen. Amen. Now, I'm not trying to get all deep on you, but listen, what's in the spirit realm is more real than what we see. Because what we see came out of the spirit realm. Amen. And God said, let that be. And that was. And God spoke out of himself. And that was out of the spirit realm. So, but we, we have concentrated on the natural realm and discounted what's in the spirit realm. Man, we have angelic hosts, oh man, that have been assigned to us, amen, to minister to us. But we discount that because we just don't know. Number next. Know that God is leading you through the valley and not around it. <laughs> amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, amen. See, see, we want to go around the valley. Don't take me through it, God. No, no, he said, I'm take, I'm, I'll take you through the valley. Because there's something in the valley I need to teach you. Amen. See, because when I'm going through the valley, I got to trust him solely. God, I trust you. Now, now, now it's not pleasant sometimes to go through the valley. <laughs> You know, because in the valley, that's where your enemies are. In the valley, that's where the stumbling blocks are. But God said, I'm going to bring you through the valley. 
<laughs> Number six. Rejoice over the victories that you've had even in tough times. Amen. Man, when you think about how good God has been to you in, in your past, see, sometimes we just got to just, just go back and remember how good God has been to us. God, yeah, I remember how you brought me out of that. I remember how you brought me out of that. I remember how you brought me out of that. Now, what is this situation I'm going through? Oh, man, many times I had to just stop and just remember how good God has been to me. God, you just brought me. Look, God, you've been so good to me. There's no reason for me to complain because when I, when I just think about how good you've been, and all that you've done for me. Amen. Look, I can just shout right now. And so when I'm going through my little situation I'm going through, look, God, I just remember how you brought me out. Amen, amen, amen. <laughs> number, number next. Respond to present distress with bold faith. Amen. Respond to present distress. So whatever you're going through, respond with it with your faith. Amen. Put your faith on it. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And then the last thing, the last thing tonight is that you put on patience. Oh, my goodness. You know, sometimes, some God, sometimes God just allows us to go through things just to perfect our patience and our trust in him. Yeah. And sometimes we just got to put on patience that, look, God, I know I trust you. Lord, I know I want it to be over. But, Lord, I'm, I'll just wait on you. He says, we have need of patience that after we have done the will of God, we might receive the promise. God, I just put on patience. Amen. I trust you so much, God. I'll, I'll just wait. I, 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 sometimes I don't like, you know, we, we, we some impatient folk. Amen. Because, I mean, we in a society now that wants everything fast, quick, and in a hurry. Give it to me now. I want it quick. I want, it, I want, it, I want instant this and I want instant that. And God say, I, 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 just wait on me. Do you trust me? Wait on me. Man, I, 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 was, thinking about, I was thinking about the lesson on this past Sunday. And uh, I was thinking about Abraham and Sarah. And I'm thinking, God talked to this guy when he was 75 years old. But for 24 more years, what God promised him never showed up. But he trusted him so much. That God, even if my member's not functioning properly, if you said we could do it, it can be done. And so he waited for 24 more years patiently on God. That God, I'm going to trust you. And then the promised seed came. My God, can you wait for 24 hours for God to show up in your situation? <laughs> Not, not just 24 years, but 24 hours. Yeah. Before you start running to another option. Yeah. Yeah. 24 days. Yeah. 24 months. Yeah. 24 years. Can, can you just wait on God? While you're waiting, I chose life. Now I'm just going to be patient and wait on God now. Man. That was faith. That's why he's called the father of faith. Amen. And so now it's our, it's our turn. It's our day to prove to God, God, I trust you. Then I thought about, I thought about Job, Angie. I thought about Job. And, and, and I, here's what I thought about. The devil didn't even know about Job until God told him. Have you considered my servant Job? You know, yeah, yeah. That was that was something built in him. And that was something that God, how God surveyed his life, that said, Job can handle this situation. You know, he could he can he can handle this. I don't care. Look, the only thing that I'm restricting you from is taking his life. Everything else, fair game. Lord. You take that hedge from around him, he going to curse you. But here's God. Have you considered my servant? Because I know that if a choice is placed before him,
they're going to choose life. His wife, his wife even said, go ahead and curse God and die. Job said, no, there's a life option here. Well, what's the life option for you, Job? Pray for my friends. What's the life option? Pray for my friends. And the moment I chose God's life option, I got double for my trouble. Glory to God. <laughs> so what are you going to do tonight? When you're going through your situations, there's a life option for you to trust God. Amen. To, to solely trust God. God, you are my source. Amen. And I trust you with everything that I am. Choose life. I'm going to close out with Deuteronomy. Back there again. Deuteronomy chapter 30. Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 19. Watch this. And I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that both thou and thy seed May, be, may live. Amen? And I got to stop because I am out of time. Give God a big hand of praise. Amen?